This is from a Psalm of David, Psalm 20. The Lord answered you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protected you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory and in the name of our God set up our banners. And may the Lord fulfill all your petitions. I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hands. Some boast in chariots, some of horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We bow with me for a brief moment of prayer. Lord God Almighty, this is different. Lord, I, I, I come before you and come before this congregation and, and ask for your words. Because Lord, as we argued this morning, this isn't what I wanted or where I was going to go. But you are God. And you have this message for us today. This message that you have placed within our hearts to come out of your heart. So Lord, may these words again come and fill our hearts and help open our eyes to see you in the midst of what is going on around us, in the midst of our daily, our day, in the midst of our peaks and our valleys, in the midst of our heart. In your name, amen. So I was fully intending talking about Matthew 17, uh, the, the, that, that whole story, because there's a lot into it. But as this morning has gone on, as I woke up this morning, so I, the call to worship, Psalm 20, verse 7, has been in my heart, and it seems to be that trust has been a word that's been overcoming my heart lately. Uh, and more so today, every song seemed to point to trust. Kelly's prayer seemed to point to trust. Some other words that came out this morning pointed to trust, which got me to thinking about what it is that God's meaning and saying today. Because there's, there's this moment in time where as we wrestle with God that we need to open up and surrender our lives and say, I trust you. I trust you with what's happening. And as I look amongst us today, there's a lot that is happening. There's a lot of transitions going on. There's some health transitions of ourselves, of family members, of loved ones. There's job transitions. There's life transitions. There's loved ones who have transitioned to other places. There's heartache. There's hurt. And I say that because there is all that that does happen within us and around us. And in David's day, when David wrote this psalm, he was facing some monumental battles. Battles that would shape that nation, shape that country, shape that kingdom. And, and, and not even necessarily knowing that he is the king yet. Saul is probably still king when he writes this. And that's just going off the top of my head. I don't have any scholarly background to pick that up other than what is written. That, that David is struggling. And as he's looking around and he's looking to see what is happening, he, he turns his eyes, not just, he turns his eyes from what is going on within him to seeing what God is doing already. What God is already moving, where God is already working, what God has already opened up. 
what God has, has already proved to him over and over and over again, that God would continue to be there. Did it always work out for David? Not the way he hoped. Not the way he wanted. But that did not diminish his trust. And, and by no means is David the perfect person. I mean, we can look at later in his life when he has his affair and, 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 and his whole family situation. And there are moments in those times where you could really question his trust in God because he trusted more in himself to do his own plans, to figure him, get himself out of his own situation. But at the end of the day, he came back to, I'm trusting in God. I'm trusting in what God is doing. I'm trusting in what God is saying. I'm trusting the promises that I've seen, that I have heard. And we're in that same boat. We are. We are in that same boat. We have our hands that we think we can do it on our own. I can pick myself up, right? If I fall down, it's myself picking, getting myself back on my feet. I don't need friends. I don't need people. We have this mentality that we can do it on our own. Independence Day. Isn't that what we kind of rally around? I'm independent. I'm on my own. I can do it, right? Get our muscles. Uh, I'm sorry, Chuck and Steve. I can't quite do it like you guys, but... Uh, but we do. And then when we look around, we forget about all the people that helped us get here. We forget about that, that, that love that continued to give us the wisdom and the strength we needed. We forget about the trust that we had developed when we first started out. When we first fell down, didn't we have that moment of prayer? Didn't we have that moment of, oh my God, what am I doing? And then didn't God answer? You're trusting in me. I will see you through. I will open the doorways. I, I will be the one that is standing in your corner giving you the encouragement and the strength you need. Will we struggle? Yes. We'll still hurt. We'll still fall. We'll still try to pick ourselves up because as Americans, that's who we are. I would even put it even better. As Appalachian people, that's who we are. But we need each other. And we need this trust in God. As that psalmist says, as David said, he said, you know what? The, 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 the Lord answers you in the day of trouble. The name of God will protect you. He'll send help. He'll give you support. Remember all your offering. He will remember all that you have given and all that you have shared and all the sacrifices you have made. And then he goes on not only from what God has done to what God will do. May God grant you. May God grant you favor. May God grant your request. May God do these things. He doesn't say God will. He says may, which is a significant piece that we need to look at too. It's, it's not that promise that yep, God said it, it's done. It's that God is going to. May God do it. It's not that secure 100% guarantee. If you don't like it, return it in 90 days. It's that God's there. And God may not always see it the way you see it. What God does ask you to do is trust. Trust. Uh, because there's this moment in time when we realize that we need a team. We need a team of people behind us. And I know this is so scattered because, again, like I said, this isn't exactly how I planned it. We need a team of people to help us. You think about your sports teams. We can use a football player if you want, or, or since it's baseball season, we'll talk about baseball for a minute. The pitcher stands on this hill 66, mile, 66 feet away, throws a ball, and someone's going to hit that ball right back. 
into the play, field of play. And that pitcher can't be in left field, right field, center field, first base, second base, shortstop, third base, or catcher at the same time, can he? If he did, it'd be very amazing. But when that ball was hit, someone else needs to catch that ball. Someone else needs to throw it on to first base, or someone else needs to get the other team out. There's trust. Because if that pitcher decides that he wants to do it on his own, he will not finish the game. Or she. She will not be able to finish up what is happening. Run out of energy. No matter how much workout they do, no matter how much they train, how much prepare, they will not be able to complete the nine innings. The other team, if it's just up to that one person hitting the ball, they can maybe, if they hit a home run over the fence, they can go around all four. At best, they'll get to maybe third base, maybe second, maybe first. But if they're the only one hitting the ball and they're at first base, how can they score? There's no one else there. They need the other members of the team, and they need to trust them. And they need to work together to do that. We are in a church. We are in a community of faith. We have our trust with one another. We have our trust in God. We have this opportunity, this, this place of being, and I know it's a place, and I know it's a physical building, but there are other things that are going on within us that we can trust and lean on one another, that we can trust that each other will have our backs and give us the strength we need to stand, the strength that we need to share our love for Christ and our love for God. That we have this trust in not only in each other, but this trust in God, which is amazing. An amazing trust that, that continues to see us of where we are. So if you think about it for a moment, we're not perfect, right? Anybody did something wrong this morning? Yeah, yeah okay, I know. I'll be the first one to admit it. I had another thing running through my head, but I'll save that for another day. Uh, as you think about what has happened and occurred within the last 24 hours, you probably had either a cross thought, a harsh word, maybe you did something, maybe you lashed out at a family member or a friend or were disappointed or were hurt. And you acted out in that pain. For a moment, and I just say for a moment, you trusted that your action was better than theirs. You trusted that what you heard was what they said. What you did was appropriate for what you had heard. Whether that's true or not, but that was your perception, and you trusted in that. And as we come think about trust for a moment and, and we think about that perception and we think about what is going on and what that is, there comes that moment when we do that with God. We have this thought that God has promised us that we would have a life of ease that there would be nothing bad that ever happens to us. That, uh, that other Christians would not say anything bad about us. That life would be simple. And I would suspect that as David wrote this psalm that he might have had those words in the back of his head. The thought of that if I obey God, God will give me all I want. And then one that doesn't come to fruition. We feel that God has broken our trust. And we wrestle 
and we struggle. Because we don't know what to do. And in that moment, in that moment, we react and we act out and we get angry and we get mad and we lash out and, and, and we just are harsh. And we don't know what to do. And I wish I could write out a simple plan. This is what you do. Step one, two, three, four, and five. But there's no simple way. It comes back to being trusting. One, it comes back in, in saying that, you know what, God? I am admitting that we're wrong. They're admitting that we're hurt. Admitting that we're struggling. Admitting that it's not going the way we want it to. And then trusting. Trusting that, that God is still working and moving and in control. That God hasn't dropped us. That God hasn't laid us on the ground and stomped on us. Still believing that God will be at work. We, we may need to confess some things. We may need to open up that doorway, that closet that we've kept closed for a very long time. We may have to pray. We may have to talk to other believers to get their perspective of what is happening of what is going on. Help me make sense of this. And we may have to trust them to help carry this burden in prayer and give us the encouragement and be that hopeful person for us when there doesn't seem to be any hope. Because we're not able to do it on our own. We need to work together. And we need to trust.